Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at five of some of the hardest circle theorem questions. We're going to build up to a question like this that you see on the screen where we've got some algebra involved, but we're also going to look at different circle theorems questions that involve other topics as well. Um, but we're going to work through five of what I kind of categorise as some of the hardest uh, exam style questions. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so the first question that we're going to have a look at is this one that we've got here. Now, as with all of these videos here, I would suggest that with this type of uh, series with the five hardest questions that you do have a go at these questions, perhaps make a little sketch of them, see how far you can get with it, and then compare your answer with my little walkthrough. So I won't ask you to pause the video at any point, we're just going to go through these five questions. So with this one here, it's a great question because there are different ways to approach this. But it says here that A, B and C are points on the circumference and the circle has the centre zero. It says D, A, E is the tangent to the circle, which is this line here, so that's our tangent. We've got angle B, A, E is 56, which is labelled on the diagram, and angle C, B, O is 35, which is also labelled on the diagram. It says to work out the size of angle C, A, O. So let's label that C to A to O is this little angle here. So let's label that. So that's the angle that we're going to be looking for. Okay, so moving on to the rest of the question then. It says you must show all of your working. So we're going to show all of our working throughout. Now the first thing that we need to do here is look for what angle we can find, if any, straight away. Now this all comes down to knowing that the tangent is 90 degrees to the radius. So this full angle here, and just thinking about exam technique, you would get a mark for putting this little right angle on there. So always label that when you see a tangent to a circle, uh, to a radius. So we've got that as 90 degrees, and part of that angle has already been given to us as 56. So if we do 90, take away 56, and again, making sure we show our working for that. So 90 minus 56, which is 34 degrees. There we go, so we can put our 34 degrees there. Now we need to have a look at where we can go with that. So this, and I'm gonna highlight it, this triangle here is a certain type of triangle, okay? Because it is made up using two radiuses. So that is an isosceles triangle. And the base angles in the isosceles are equal, so if we mark on these lines here that are the same length, we know that this one over here is gonna be 34. And then we can then use angles in a triangle to work that out. So for this angle here in the centre, we can say 180, take away the total of those two 34s, which is 68, and that would give us an angle which is 112 degrees. So we know that that angle there is 112. Now there are lots of different ways to go with this. Okay, We could have um, used two different ways now to get this angle over here. Okay, so there's two different ways of getting that. We can either do angles at the centre, which makes that 112, and angles at the circumference. Okay, so that angle at the circumference is half the angle at the centre. Or we could have done the alternate segment theorem. We have this cyclical triangle that is touching the tangent. So this angle over here is going to be equal to this angle here, this 56. So two different ways that we could get this angle, but the angles at the centre angles at the circumference is quite a nice one. So it just depends on which method you use as to how you show your working. So if we do half of 112, angles at the centre being half the angle at the circumference, that gives us 56 anyway. So we can get that angle there being 56 degrees. Now we've not got too far left to actually get to our final uh, corner there, and there are different ways that you can do this. Now one really nice way that I've seen, I'm not gonna take this approach for this one, but you could actually draw in an extra line here and we could just work our way round this triangle looking at all these different isosceles. So you've got another isosceles triangle that's just been created there, in which case you can get the two base angles and the angle at the top, and then you can do angles round a point and do another isosceles triangle to find that base angle. That's a really nice way as well. It just involves a lot less circle theorems. But if we take this approach instead, let's have a look at where we can go next. So within this shape now, we have got this quadrilateral here. 
Okay, it's got four sides, it's making that arrowhead shape, and it is a quadrilateral. And we've got two of those angles, and one of them we're actually able to work out. So if we swap to a different colour here, on the other side of the 112, we can get that angle there. Again, if we do that working out, we would take away 112 from 360. So again, we'll show that working out. Take away 112, and that leaves us with 248. There we go, so that's 248 degrees. There we are. And we know that all the angles in a quadrilateral have to add up to 360. So we can just total up those four angles within that quadrilateral, and let's just highlight it again, and find our missing angle that makes it up to 360. So again, showing our working out, we've got 248, we've got 35, and we've got 56. And if we add all of those together, let's see what we get. 4, 5, 6, 7, that's 12, 13. So that adds up to 339 at the moment. So if we take that away from 360, take away 339, and that leaves us with 21 degrees following that process there. So our final answer would be 21 degrees. There we go. And all of our working out is shown around the diagram. But again, as I said, there's loads of different ways for getting to the answer for that one. That's just one method that I've chosen to use for this particular question. So there we go, there's our first question. Let's have a look at question two. And on to our next question. So this one here says that B, C, and D are points on the circumference of a circle. It says A, B, O is a straight line. So that's this one here connecting from B, A to the center. So that's a straight line. It says A, D is a tangent. So this line here that's forming the base of that triangle is a tangent. And we know from the last question what a tangent forms with the radius. It says angle D, A, O is 40 degrees, which is labeled for us on the diagram. And it wants us to work out the size of angle B, C, D and B to C to D is this one here on this little shape. So let's have a look at this one. Now we already know that it, there's a tangent meeting a radius, so straight away we should put this 90 degrees in, okay? It does say give a reason for each stage you're working. So for this one here, we're gonna say that that is 90 degrees, and I'm not gonna write down all the description here, but you need to say that a tangent meets a radius at 90 degrees, or it forms a right angle, or any variation of that language that you've learnt. Now we need to have a look at what we can, where we can go from here. Now we've obviously got this big triangle here, and now we know that that bottom angle there is 90, we are only missing one angle in that triangle, and that angle is just here. So we can work that angle out. So if we do 90 plus, plus that 40 there, that's 130. So to work out the size of that missing angle, we'll do 180, take away 130, and that leaves us with 50 degrees. So we can put 50 degrees there, at that central point, and that is the final angle in that triangle. So now where do we go from here? Now we've got a quadrilateral inside the triangle, in, inside the triangle, sort of inside the circle there. In fact, let's highlight it. So we've got this shape here, which is a four-sided shape. So that is a quadrilateral. Now we know that that's going to add up to 360, but we don't know what the angle is up here, there we go, and there's not really any way for us to work that out. We know that there's 90, obviously in the bottom right of the triangle, but that's not within the quadrilateral there. So we need to take a different approach to this. Now what we do have is we have this angle at the centre being made, let's get rid of that, and then we've got this angle here that we're looking for, which is an angle at the circumference. But we've got to be very careful here, because although it is an angle at the circumference, it's not related directly to that 50 degrees. Now if we draw the these lines in here, there we go, and we can see that that forms that sort of arrowhead shape. And that is where the angles at the centre, angles, uh, angles at the circumference are related to that 50. So this angle here would be half of that 50, it'd be 25. Now in terms of looking at this sort of reverse option here, and this is why this question is, what I would say is more of a difficult question, we actually have to look at the angle on this side Okay, this is the angle at the centre, the big reflex angle. That's what's related to that angle at the circumference that we're looking for. So if we find this angle here, and we would do that by taking, it away, taking away that 50 from 360, that would leave us with 310. So this angle here is 310. And again, you give your reason for that. So we would say the reason being that angles at the centre or, or round a point add up to 360 degrees. 
Now we can use that to find this angle here, because now we've got an angle at the center, an angle at the circumference that are related, and it's gonna be half of that 310. So for our working, we'd do 310 divided by two, and it leaves us with our answer, which is 155 degrees. And it's very important that we give the reason for that. So we would say angles at the center are double the angle at the circumference, or angles at the circumference are half of the angle made at the center via the same two points or via the same arc, okay? So there we go, that would be our question there. This question does involve writing down those reasons though, so just make sure that your reasons are nice and logically placed next to your working. And in fact, a good tip that I would suggest for the exam is obviously just to make sure that you label it in sort of points over here. So point number one, we got the 90 degrees, and I would put my reason, which would be the tangent, and again, fully explaining that reason. Then maybe I would do the point number two, which was the 50 degrees, and again, labeling what these angles are. So that was angle, uh, the 50 degrees is angle D, O, B, or however you want to label it. And just making sure that your description there is as thorough as possible so that it's not lost in your working out. But there we go, there's question two. Let's have a look at our next one. So on to our next question. Now this one here does involve a calculator. So we will need a calculator for this one. Now it says here that angle or A, B and C are points on the uh, circle of radius five centimeters, center zero. So we can see that on the diagram, we've got the radius drawn in there and it's been labeled with that five centimeters. And we are gonna be looking for um, the length of an arc in this question. So let's just have a look and read through the rest of it. It says DA and DC are tangents. So we've got these two lengths here that are tangents. So we've got these tangent questions being sort of in a lot of these sort of exam questions. So it's definitely a very important one for us to know. And we have DO is nine centimeters. Now that length there is not on the diagram. So we need to label that on straight away. As soon as we read that information and we see it's not on the diagram, we'll label that on. So that's length here, nine centimeters. It says work out the length of the arc ABC. And ABC is the big one here around the outside. And in order to work out the length of that arc, we're gonna to need to know the angle of that major sector there. So we need to get that angle around the outside. Once we've done that, we can use our circumference formula or arc length formula in order to get that arc length. But let's have a look. So what can we work out? Now we already mentioned that there's some tangents. So we know that this is a right angle and this is a right angle as well. And what we need in order to get that angle out the outside, we need these angles just here. Okay, so there's two of them. Now that um, quadrilateral there is split perfectly in half, okay, to form two right angle triangles. And those two right angle triangles are congruent, so they are exactly the same there. The tangents meet at equal length, they're both five centimeters as the radius, and they both share that nine centimeter line. So these are two congruent triangles. So if we find the angle in one of those, we can double it up and then find the angle around the outside. So that's how we're gonna approach this question. Now, in order to find that angle there within a right angle triangle, we are gonna be using a different topic. So we're gonna be using Sokotoa. So in order to find that angle there, if we think about this, we have got, and if I draw this triangle, maybe let's draw it down here, We've got a right angle triangle. We're trying to find this angle here. We have that the hypotenuse is nine centimeters and the adjacent side to the angle there is five centimeters. And again, just doing a bit of Sokotoa. So label it up, you've got your hypotenuse and you've got your adjacent. So we're gonna be using cos. So cos, or if you use a formula triangle, CAH, and we're gonna be working out the angle. So we need to do cos minus one a over h, which is five over nine. So again, let's type that into our calculator, cos minus one, and then five over nine, pressing equals, and we get our angle there, which is 56.251014. So that is that angle just here in the center. Now, obviously we've got two of those, so we need to double that to get the full angle. So let's just get rid of this. So this full angle here is gonna be two lots of the 56.25. So two times, that's not, that's not a five, let's do that again. Two times 56.25101114. 
So times by two on the calculator, and we get 112.502 and 0 0.228. Now notice that I am leaving all of the numbers there when I write it down. It's asked me in the question to give my final answer three significant figures, so I don't want to get any rounding errors along the way. So unless it's going off the screen on the calculator, I will always write it up to at least seven decimal places. Now this one doesn't actually stop at seven decimal places, but we'll leave it there just to make sure it's as accurate as possible. Now we can go about working this angle here. Again, angles around a point add up to 360. So if we do 360 and we take away this 112.502 number, I'm not going to write them all down there because I'm typing this in on the calculator, 360 take away answer, and it gives us a final angle there of 247.497772. There we go, degrees. So that's our angle there in the major sector. Now we need to find the length of the arc. So we need to know our formula for working out arc length. So another topic that's involved in here. So we have pi times by the diameter or times by 2r, whichever formula you use, times by the angle, which I'm going to call theta, over 360. So if we plug all these numbers in, we have pi times the diameter, which is two of those fives, so times 10, times by this angle over 360. So 247.49, and the rest of those numbers, all over 360. So again, I'm gonna use the answer button on my calculator. So leaving the answer there, pi times 10, times, pressing my fraction button, answer over 360, and it gives us an answer here, which comes out as 21, Point five nine eight two seven two nine seven, and again then referring back to the question it wants it to three significant figures so that's going to be 21 point the third significant figure is the five it's a nine afterwards so that's going to go up to 21.6 and the units are centimeters so we get 21.6 centimeters for this question so there we go, you can obviously see how that one's a lot trickier. It doesn't actually involve that many circle theorems, it obviously involves the tangent to the radius being 90 degrees, and it involved knowing that two tangents meet at equal length. But other than that, it didn't involve too much in terms of the circle theorems, but it was using circle theorems to solve a much harder problem. So there we go, a slightly different question there for question three, and now we've got something different again for question four. Let's have a look. So in this question, we've got something different again, so let's read it through. A and B are points on the circumference of a circle, so enter zero. B, C is tangent to a circle, which is this one here. Again, we've got that tangent being involved again. A, O, C is a straight line, so that's this one here. It's just, oh, that's not the wrong one. So A, O, C, this one here, that's going through the diameter, so through the center there, and then continuing over to C. It's just telling us that's a straight line. And angle A, B, O is equal to X. So A, B, O which makes us draw this extra line in just there, so A to B to O. So it's telling us that this little angle here is X. Find the size of angle A, C, B in terms of X. So A to C to B is this angle over here. Give your answer in its simplest form and give reasons for each stage of your working. Now let's have a look at this one. So straight away, we've obviously drawn that extra line in. And in doing that, we have created an isosceles triangle. So this little one here is formed by those two radiuses, so we have an isosceles. Now we know that base angles in an isosceles are equal, so we know that this angle over here must also be x, whatever that number is, but obviously we're doing it in terms of x, okay? Bear in mind, we're not getting any numbers here, we are doing it in terms of x. So we've got a triangle there. Now if we draw that separately, let's have a look, let's draw it in the same orientation. We've got x and x, there we go and we can work out the size of this angle at the top of that in terms of x. Now, if we knew the two values of x, we would add them together, which would make 2x, and we'd take it away from 180. So if we write that in terms of x, this angle here would be 180, and we would take away 2x, and that would give us that angle here. So straight away, we can actually label that on the diagram. So that one there is 180 minus 2x.
Now I'm not forgetting for this one, it does say that you need to give a reason at each stage of your working. So straight away we've got two reasons to write down. We've got base angles in an isosceles are equal, and we've got angles in a triangle adding up to 180. Now we've got something else that we can add in here. By adding in that radius from O to B, we've also created that 90 degree angle. So we can also say here that obviously where the radius meets the tangent forms a right angle. And there's another reason for us to write down. But let's have a look, and we, we can almost get to our angle here. Now in order to get to that angle there, we're going to have to work out this angle here in that triangle. Now that is on a straight line, it is next to that 180 take away 2x. So if we want to work this one out here, we'll have to take that angle next to it, the 180 minus 2x, away from 180. And if we do that, let's just write that out. So that's going to be 180, and we're going to take away the 180 minus 2x. Now here's where you've got to be careful, because we're taking away both those pieces. So we should put that into a bracket when we've got these two pieces, or any more than one piece there. We'll put it into a bracket, so we've got that to work out. So 180, take away the 180, that gets us 0. And taking away the negative 2x will leave us with positive 2x. So that angle there just ends up being 2x. So there we go, we've just got 2x. There we go. So if we draw this triangle out, what we've got so far, we've got the right angle down the bottom. We've now got 2x up the top, and we are working out this one here. Okay, so just very quickly running through this bit of working out again, we've got 180, take away the 180, that gets us zero, and we're also taking away the negative 2x, that flips the sign there, so we've got positive 2x. Okay, so just in case that bit, little bit was a bit too quick for you, but we're almost there, we've got this triangle, we've got O as the center there, this is B, and this is C, and we're working out this final angle. Now we know that one of them is a right angle. So these two angles here, the 2x and the one that we're looking for, have to add up to 90 degrees as well. So in order to get this angle here, we would take away the 2x from the remaining 90. So that would be 90 degrees, take away the 2x. Or if you wanted to write it in long form, you could have 180, take away 90, take away the 2x, which would just leave you with 90 minus 2x. So that angle right there, is finished, that is in terms of x, it's 90 take away 2x. And that is the size of angle ACB in terms of x. So there we go, something a little bit different there involving algebra, but it's just working your way around the shape as if you knew the numbers, but just using the letter x instead. So a little bit of geometric proof involved there. So there we go, there's our fourth question. Let's have a look at our final uh, question for this video. And on to our final question, again we've got some algebra involved, and again, similar to question one, we've got a lot of different methods that you can use to get the answer for this one. But let's have a read through, and I'm going to go through one particular method. So it says A, B, C, and D are points on the circumference of the circle, centre zero. F, D, E is a tangent to the circle, so we've got this one here being our tangent. Again, another question with a tangent in. And it says, show that Y minus X equals 90, and you must give a reason for each stage you're working. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can approach this. One of the ways that I like to look at this one is, again, to create a bit of an isosceles triangle. So connecting from B to O and creating this isosceles triangle there. And let's draw that in again, connecting from B to O. And we make this isosceles triangle just here using those two radiuses. So again, if we've got an isosceles triangle, the base angles in that are equal. And again, let's just label these sides. So that one there is going to be X. So this is very similar in terms of the, the, uh, the expression here that we're going to get in terms of our last question. We're going to get quite a similar one. So if I find this angle just up here at the centre, and let's label this, that right there would be 100 take away those two x's. Sorry, 180 take away those two x's. So we could write an expression for that. We could say it's 180 minus 2x. And that would be an expression for that one. Now again, I am just taking one approach here in the starting method. We can quickly discuss um, some of the methods as well, but here is a really nice method for approaching this one. Now what we've created is an angle at the center and an angle at the circumference. And we know that that angle at the circumference there is gonna be half of the angle at the center. So let's have a look at halving this in order to get that angle at the circumference. And again, writing down all our reasons here. So we've already got ang base angles in an isosceles are equal, and angles in a circle, angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. And there we go, we'll get it right. 
So this angle just up here at the circumference is going to be half of that angle at the center. So if we write 180 minus 2x all over 2, and that's going to equal for this angle here, 90 minus 1x or 90 minus x. And you might already see there, look, we're starting to get some pieces that kind of look like what we're trying to show. We've got a 90, we've got a single x on its own or a minus x. So we're starting to get there. Now we've got to have a look at this in terms of another circle theorem. So that circle theorem there, we would say obviously the angle at the circumference is half the angle at the center. Again, as it says in the question, you must give a reason for each stage you're working. So it's very important that you write that down. But now let's have a look at what else we've got. We've also got a cyclic quadrilateral here. So we've got this cyclic quadrilateral. And we know the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. So the angle over here that we have as y we know that that angle combined with our 90 minus x has to add up to 180. So if we write those two down, we've got 90 minus x plus the y, and that all equals 180. Now we're almost there now. If we take away 90 from both sides, we get minus x plus y equals 90, and then let's just rearrange the way we've written that at the start. So rather than minus x plus y, we can just write y minus x equals 90. And there we go. We've shown that via our working out. And again, our reason for that is that opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. So there we go, that's one way of showing this question. But there are lots of different ways. I'm not gonna talk fully through all the different ways, but you could apply some different methods. For example, the angle here, where the tangent meets the radius, is also gonna be y. That's gonna be the alternate segment theorem. So you could potentially use that as part of your method. You could also look for different elements as well. We also know that the radius meets the tangent at 90 degrees. So this angle here, O to D to F, or on the other side, is also equal to 90 degrees, and perhaps you can find a way that way. We also know that you can do angles at the center, angles at the circumference towards the other points. So you could potentially find the reflex angle around the outside here, like we did on a previous question, and half that, etc., to find the value of y, and perhaps you can get that way as well. As long as you have a fully correct method that gets you to this answer here, y minus x equals 90, there are lots of different ways that you can use to get there, but I think that was one of the nicest, simplest methods to get there, in my opinion, okay? But there we go, there are our five questions. Hopefully lots of different elements of circle theorems there for you to be thinking about. Don't forget to check out the full series on circle theorems, which I'm gonna link in the description, just to make sure that you are really nice and comfortable with all these circle theorems. But as I said, these are some quite tricky ones. And again, you might actually not find some of them more difficult, they weren't in any particular order, you might find certain ones more difficult than others, and that's just the way with circle theorem sometimes, it just takes us a little while to spot how to move through the shapes. So there we go, hope you enjoyed that, hope you found it useful, if you did please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.